Whoa, look who's late again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shucks, Dino. What are you watching? Ah, uh, you know, just another Whoa Wednesday. Are you serious? Wait for me. Whoa! What? A wardrobe change. <laughs> Mr. Goody Grammar, where tonight we're going to talk all about copulative conjunctions. What are they and how do we use them? Stick around. But first, let's go ahead and jump into a basket breaker. Uh -oh. For this week's basket breaker, the question is, who adds positivity to your life? Who makes your life better? Take a second and put your answer into the comment section. And what'd you get, Grammar Goodies? Here's my answer. Who adds positivity to my life? Dano! Dano does! Yeah, 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 yeah. <gasps> what? Oh! <gasps> anyway, hopefully you did something absolutely incredible. And that person or puppet adds some spice, some harmony and compassion to your life. But speaking of positivity, positivity makes me quite parched. So I think it's time we drink up some radio active waste g -g 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 -g. three two one first as stated tonight we're talking all about copulative conjunctions what are they great question well copulative conjunctions also known as additive conjunctions are coordinating conjunctions that show something has been added. The conjunction denotes that the second word, phrase, clause, or sentence conveys a fact linked to the first. So in essence, copulative conjunctions are very much the addition signs of conjunctions. They're showing that something is being added and built upon. Okay, well, let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples of copulative conjunctions. For example, we have furthermore, also, and, and plus. All of these words right here show and indicate that something is being added. For example, and. And is putting two or more things together. The same with plus. So, as you can tell, copulative conjunctions are all about addition, showing that something is being added. Let's go ahead and move on. When it comes to copulative conjunctions and commas, so punctuation, use a comma to separate the copulative conjunction if it does the following functions. First, starts a sentence as more of an adverbial. So the comma is placed after the word. So let's say that we want to start a sentence with a copulative conjunction. We're going to go ahead and put that copulative conjunction and then put a comma directly after it. For example, we have this. Furthermore, comma, I stole the candy. Here, we started with the copulative conjunction, furthermore. Where do we place that comma? Oh yeah, directly after furthermore to offset it from the rest of the sentence. And, furthermore, indicates that we're adding on to the previous sentence. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay, let's go ahead and build on this. So, here's what I want you to do. Take one of our copulative conjunctions, also, and, furthermore, plus, and create an original sentence that starts with that copulative conjunction. Wait a second, though. 
Don't forget to put that comma directly after it. Here's one last example. Also, I crashed the car. Whoa! It starts with the copulative conjunction also, followed by that comma and then the rest of the sentence. So take a second and create an original sentence that uses a copulative conjunction. and dive into a couple more comma rules when it comes to copulative conjunctions. When your copulative conjunction joins two independent clauses, place the comma before the copulative conjunction. Well, think about it. Copulative conjunctions are coordinating conjunctions, right? So we can use a comma and a copulative conjunction to join two independent clauses together to form a compound sentence and we use the comma in the same way that we do when we use our fanboys. So, let's look at this. I need to talk to him, plus he has my gardening gloves. Here, we have two independent clauses put together with a comma and the copulative conjunction plus, where this second independent clause is building off of the first one, adding some extra information with that plus. So, Again, if we're putting two independent clauses together with a comma and a copulative conjunction, we need to put our comma directly before the copulative conjunction. Keep that in mind because that's a little different from starting the sentence with a copulative conjunction where we put a comma after it. So let's go ahead and practice. Here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and create an original sentence that uses a comma and a copulative conjunction to put two independent clauses together. In essence, you're creating a compound sentence that uses a copulative conjunction to join your clauses. Let's look at one last example before you jump into it. We have, I can't wait for my birthday and I'm going to have the biggest party. Here, we have two independent clauses put together with a comma and and, which is, oh, a copulative conjunction. So, think you could do that? Write a compound sentence that uses a copulative conjunction? I know you can. And get to it! I'm still a little confused, so I think we need to add on to this concept by asking for some employee assistance. Oh, so much grammar. My head's gonna explode. I don't know what to do. I need help. We need some employee assistance. Okay, grammar goodies. For this section, here's what's gonna happen. You'll be given various sentences with copulative conjunctions in them. What you need to do is determine where the comma goes in each sentence. Think you could do that? Determine where the comma goes in each sentence? I know you can. And let's do it! Question 1. Plus, he doesn't even have a clue about the situation. Again, our sentence is, plus, he doesn't even have a clue about the situation. Where will we put the comma in this sentence? Take a second. Think about it. answer is right after plus plus comma he doesn't even have a clue about the situation since we started the sentence with a copulative conjunction we need to put the comma right after it to offset it from the rest of the sentence pretty easy right let's go on 
to question two. I need to go to the store and I need to purchase candles. Ha, we're having a seance, yeah. No, we're not. I don't play with that. So where does the comma go in this sentence? Take a second, think about it, and put your answer into the comments. The answer is oh, right after store and before the copulative conjunction and. I need to go to the store, comma, and I need to purchase candles. It's putting two independent clauses together into a compound sentence. Pretty cool, right? Let's move on to question three. Kelly is sick of games. Also, he is done with others' lies. Again, our sentence is, Kelly is sick of games. Also, he is done with others' lies. Where will we put the comma in this sentence? Take a second. Here's the answer. The answer is after games. Once again, we have a compound sentence. Two independent clauses put together with a comma and a copulative conjunction. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's go ahead and move on to question four. We have, furthermore, I devoured all the pizza. <laughs> no, 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 no. Where are we going to go ahead and put the comma in this sentence? Think about it. Okay, here's the answer. The answer is right after furthermore. The sentence starts with the copulative conjunction furthermore. Therefore, we need to offset it with this comma directly after it. That's it. Alrighty, grammar goodies. Pretty cool, right? Did you get four out of four? I know you did. And if you didn't, no stress. Keep in mind, this is all just practice. And without further ado, I think I'm going to go ahead and put you to the test by doing an aisle check. Pop, pop. For this section, here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and write two original sentences that use copulative conjunctions in them. Think you could do that? Write two original sentences that use copulative conjunctions? I know you can. And get to it! you have some incredible sentences. Don't forget to post those into the comment section. I would love to read them. But now it's time for my least favorite parts of the evening. It's time for us to start checking out. Whoa. And without further ado, it's your favorite time of the entire lesson. It's time for the Grammar Goody Sentence Shadow of the Week! The Grammar Goody Sentence Shadow of the Week goes to an individual or individuals that participate in the comment section on any of our social media platforms, whether that be YouTube or even TikTok. Yeah! And the Grammar Goody Sentence Shout Out goes to... Oscar! I shortened it. Oscar! Great job! Oscar said, excellent explanation. Thank you so much 
I definitely appreciate it. And I'm glad that you are getting all the content knowledge out of General Grammar with Mr. Goody Grammar. And again, if you would also like a oh, 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 Grammar Goody Scented Shout Out of the Week, make sure to participate in our comments. And check us out on all our different platforms. Word of the Week every Sunday, live sessions every Wednesday called Whoa Wednesdays. Content episodes every other Friday, sentence shoutouts regularly, and what do you want me to teach you? Make sure to put that into the comments. Follow us. And ah, thank you so much for dropping by General Grammar, Grammar Goodies. My name is Mr. Goody Grammar. And comma in anytime. I'll see ya. Whoa! Do, 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 do. Whoa! What are you still doing here? Don't you know that the episode is over? What? Okay, okay. I get it. I mean, I, I know you love grammar. So why don't you hit like on this video? In fact, share it and do a little comment. But mainly, subscribe. Why haven't you subscribed yet? In fact, if you don't subscribe, you could be pulled into an interdimensional vortex. <gasps> so, make sure to subscribe. Remember, general grammar is tons of fun. What are you waiting for? Whoa! Click on another video. Huh? <laughs>